Hey guys, I'm Adam Newbold. I'm director of Advanced Training Group Worldwide. We are a government contracting company. We train elite special forces, special operators, special warfare personnel. Um, I'm a retired Navy SEAL after 24 years in the Navy, almost all of that time with the SEAL teams. I spent quite a few years with the uh, CIA. I'm a federal firearms instructor. I'm a uh, sniper instructor. I'm a combat pistol instructor, combat carbine instructor, and lots of other stuff too. But we are here today to talk about safe weapons handling skills. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this safe weapons handling course. What we are going to talk about, the skill sets, the policies and procedures that you will adhere to within safe weapons handling, they are not just for beginners. They're not just for on the range. It is the way that you handle weapons anytime you're around them. They're very, very important. I've had uh, beginners say, or people that, that think they know a lot about weapons, but they were never formally taught about weapons, as well as police officers say, well, you know, at ATG, they just, they overdo safety because um, they're, they're worried about beginners on the range. That's not how we really do it in the police force. Well, shame on you, because it should be, because at the, the most elite level, that's how we do it in the SEAL teams. Um <clears throat> These are for you to use uh, at any time, any time that you're handling weapons, okay? So the laws are not to be um, skipped over. Sometimes there are things that happen that make you less safe than you should be, but the laws of weapon safety are overlapping, and hopefully you're going to be covered multiple other ways if for some reason something... Uh, you're doing something that you shouldn't be. Okay, in front of me, I have a pistol and a magazine on the, the table, okay? And the, uh, the pistol is a 
Sig Sauer P226 Navy variant, just like I used in the SEAL teams. This pistol is placed on the table in a certain uh, uh, configuration. Now, what would you think the first thing that I'm going to do with this pistol is when I pick it up? What is the first thing that I'm going to do with this pistol? I want you to think about it. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do with this pistol, the first thing when I pick this up and as I'm picking it up, I'm going to point it in a safe direction. Okay. A little bit of a trick question there because many of you would certainly have said that uh, we want to make this pistol clear and safe. But before I even do that, as I'm picking up this pistol, I want to make sure it's pointed in a safe direction. So what is a safe direction? Is down a safe direction? Is up a safe direction? Uh, down range, is that a safe direction? Well, it all depends. It depends on where you're at, uh, who else is where, right? So if I'm on a range and there is a down range area where the targets are, that normally would be a safe direction, but if someone else is downrange putting up targets or putting up pasties or, you know, checking their, their shots, their shot placement, then pointing a weapon down that way would not be the safest place to point that weapon, okay? If I point a weapon up, that could be safe, but you have to think about people that might be on the second story of a, a two-story building, you know, who's upstairs. If you accidentally or negligently discharge around upward, where's it going to go? I, same thing with down. Who is down below me? Okay. Am I up on top of a ladder? Well, I'm on the second story of a, a two-story building. Okay. When we as SEALs get on and off of helicopters, we, we carry our weapons a lot uh, unless it's long, long-term stuff, we carry our weapons at high port a lot. Um, carry them at low port too, but helicopter pilots and crew members get pretty uh, anxious whenever we uh, we're carrying our weapons at a high port because up up above there is the engine, and if if that stops working because someone shot it and caused it to stop working, helicopters have a tendency to just drop. Uh, pretty quickly, at least military helicopters. So, so that engine's pretty important. So, if you shot around down through the floor, not as big a deal as shooting around up through the engine, right? Um, now, of course, we don't just go around uh, squeezing off rounds every which way we go. So, but pointing our muzzle, making sure we maintain good muzzle discipline is extremely important. So the first thing I'm going to do when I pick up this weapon is I'm going to point it in a safe direction. So I'm making a determination of where is a safe direction. And for me right now in this house, this is my home, um, I'm just gonna point it down because downstairs is the basement. I'm on the first floor um, and I've got a very solid home with brick walls and stuff. So I could point them to the walls, but I'm just determining that safe, down is a safe direction or safest or one of the safest directions that I can point this weapon right now. So this weapon, I've picked it up. I've pointed it in a safe direction. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear and safe this weapon. I'm going to clear and safe this weapon. This weapon has the slide already locked to the rear. Okay. I'm going to visually and physically inspect the chamber, I'm going to make sure that there's no magazine at first, which there is not, okay? Make sure there's no magazine. Then I'm going to visually and physically inspect the chamber, okay? And the magazine well. And I know this weapon is clear and safe, all right? So let's talk about that a little bit more, okay? Okay, <clears throat> so I picked up the weapon. I pointed it in a safe direction. And then I'm going to clear and safe the weapon. I am not going to clear this, clear and safe the weapon in this manner. Okay. When it's safe direction, clear and safe. I'm not going to clear and safe the manner like the the weapon like this. Okay. I'm not going to just take a look 
looks good okay i'm not going to squeeze off some rounds okay i am going to let's say a lot of times we're in a gun store let's say it's a brand new weapon and a lot of times there's a magazine in the weapon and it's just like this okay now this weapon you can't tell if this weapon is loaded or not all right very dangerous potentially okay now when I pick this weapon up, no matter what capacity or configuration it's in, I pick the weapon up, point it in a safe direction. My finger's not on the trigger, of course. Okay, we'll talk about the laws of weapon safety here soon. But I'm going to drop the magazine. If there's no magazine in it, no problem. But I'm going to make sure there's no magazine in it. So I take the magazine out. Okay, I look at the magazine. It's empty. Visually and physically inspect. It's empty. Okay, I'm going to lock the slide to the rear. I locked the slide to the rear. Now I'm going to visually and physically inspect this weapon, okay? I need to visually and physically inspect it. I'm gonna look and I'm gonna feel, okay? And then same thing with the magazine well. I'm gonna look and I'm gonna feel. The reason I'm not just gonna look is because sometimes the eyes lie. And what we mean by that is Sometimes, you know, at, at the end of a range day or something, we're expecting to see an empty weapon because we've done this a hundred times. We dropped the magazine. We, we thought we shot our last round. There were two more in it, one in the magazine, one in the chamber. Okay. And we, we take a quick peek and there's something in there. Okay. But our mind tells us it's empty because we've seen it a hundred times before or a thousand times before or 10,000 times before. And that's what we, we are expecting to see. And our, our eyes bring in information, but our mind tells us what we actually saw. So I'm tired, I'm fatigued, I'm, I'm late for dinner, and I'm expecting to see an empty chamber. And that's exactly what I see. Okay. When I physically inspect it, when I visually and physically inspect it, it causes me to slow down and focus and then also, of course, feel. Okay, there's nothing in there. And then same thing with the, the, uh, the feed or the magazine well. So <clears throat> in the SEAL teams, we operate a lot in the darkness. Uh, you, when someone breaks into your house at 4 o'clock in the morning and you go downstairs with your weapon, and then you find out it's just the cat that knocked something over, okay? You also operate a lot in the darkness, okay? Or could. So when you clear and safe this weapon, you're going to visually and physically inspect, okay? Take the magazine out. If there's one in the chamber, you'll rack it out, okay? You can catch it, you can, you can pop it out, okay? Whatever, but just maintain muzzle discipline. And then you'll visually and physically inspect the chamber and you'll visually and physically inspect the magazine well. This weapon is clear and safe. Now, I walk upstairs, okay, I, I cleared it, I walk upstairs, now I'm going to place it down. Out of habit, now I, I know it's clear and safe, but out of habit, out of habit, before I put it down, I visually and physically inspect the chamber and I visually and physically inspect the magazine well. Okay, I've made that a habit. Anytime I place this weapon down or after I pick it up or before I hand it off to someone, okay, I'm going to visually and physically inspect it. It's not something that I'm thinking, oh, I better do this again or, hey, that would be the smart thing to do or that's a safe thing to do. It just is a habit. I pick up the we weapon, I point it in a safe direction, I visually and physically inspect the chamber and the magazine well. Okay, of course, again, if it's in a different capacity, I would drop, make sure there's no magazine in it, drop the magazine. If the slide is forward, I'll lock the slide of the rear, visually and physically inspect the chamber, visually, visually and physically inspect the magazine well. Okay. Oh, hey, John, you want to you wanna check out the weapon? Okay, yeah, sure. Here, you can check it out. Lock the slide of the rear, no magazine, lock the slide of the rear, visually and physically inspect the chamber, visually and, and physically inspect the magazine well. John receives the weapon. Oh, thanks, Adam. That's me, Adam, but right now I'm John. I received the weapon. I saw him just check the magazine, the, the weapon, and clear and safe it. So I can assume it's clear and safe, 
but I don't know it's clear and safe unless I check it myself, and I will. I receive the weapon. I'm not um, insulting anyone by checking it again. It's expected amongst professionals that you're going to check this weapon, and you know the condition of it. So he hands me the weapon. He just checked it, but he hands it to me. I check it visually and physically, visually and physically, okay? Walk around a little bit. I'm going to put it down visually and physically, visually and physically. It's a habit. I place it down with the ejection port, okay? This is the ejection port right here. Ejection port, okay, where the rounds, the uh, cartridges kick out there, the expended casings, and I'm gonna place it down with the ejection port up, slide lock to the rear. That's how that weapon's going to uh, sit when it's not on me, unless I'm transporting it or I have it locked away for storage, okay? But if I'm going to sit it down and it's not on my body, it's going to be sitting in this position here, in this configuration. All right. All right, so here are a few stories to help drive home the importance of knowing the condition of your weapon, of, of making sure the weapon is clear and safe, and uh, some other things. Well, again, we will talk about, we haven't hit on the five laws of weapon safety yet, but we will. So uh, we had a Green Beret at SEAL Team 8 cross training with us. Great guy uh, doing some training with SEAL Team 8. And we, we had a uh, range week where you're out shooting for, uh, for the week and you come back to the team toward the end of the week and you put all your weapons in a box, a big old box. The armorer takes control of the weapons and transports those weapons back to the armory, to the, to the team in the armory. And at the armory, you clean the weapons and put them away. Well, you clean your own weapons first, but then you uh, look for additional gear to help with because sometimes the officers or chiefs are away doing other things and the sled dogs are picking up the slack and doing what has to be done. So, um, Green Beret was finished cleaning a weapon and said, hey, let me have another weapon. Navy SEAL picks up a weapon out of the box, hands it across the table to the Green Beret. Green Beret takes the weapon. He's messing around with it and pulls the trigger and shoots the, the SEAL right in the chest. Uh, luckily, the SEAL didn't die, but it was very, very close. And... Um, a horrific accident. So who do you think was at fault for that accident? Okay. Um, I mean, Green Beret just saw, shot the, the seal in the chest. So who was at fault? Well, some would say the Green Beret, obviously, you know, finger on the trigger, shouldn't have been on the trigger and squeezed off around, shot the, the seal, wasn't paying attention where he was pointing it. Okay. Others might say, well, they're both at fault because the Navy SEAL gave him the weapon and didn't clear and safe it and check it before giving it to him. But listen to all of the things that had to go wrong for that to occur. Because you see, when you're shooting at the range, when you finish, you clear and safe your weapon. You clear and safe your weapon and normally holster your weapon. Okay, You clear and safe it and you holster it. Okay? At the end of any evolution, unless you are between evolutions, then you might have a weapon locked and loaded, right? And you're going to reload magazines or something, and your weapon's locked and loaded on, on your body, in your holster. However, at the end of an evolution, you clear and safe the weapon. You might holster it, you might not. But then you're going to take it over to, whenever it's time to take it over to the armorer, and you're going to hand it off to them. Before you hand it to them, of course, as I've already talked about, you will clear and safe it. The armorer will receive the weapon and clear and safe the weapon and place the weapon. If he's doing it as he's, as he's, he's grabbing it and placing it down, he's not going to clear and save it, then clear and save it again before he places it down because he's doing it all at once. But he's going to receive the weapon, clear and save it, and place it in the, in the box. Okay? Now, normally when you transport a weapon, you don't place it with a slide lock to the rear 
you'll place it with the slide forward, okay? And with our long guns, it'll be bolt forward and the, uh, the firing pin will be released. So you'll actually fire the weapon, you know it's clear and safe, but you'll go ahead and uh, send the uh, firing pin forward just to release tension, especially if you're storing it for a long time. Otherwise, when you're transporting and you're hitting bumps and stuff, all the guns and, and uh, rifles and pistols are going click, click, click as everything shakes around and starts sending slides and bolts forward and stuff. So you just place them in a uh, capacity where the bolt's forward or the uh, slide is closed for transport. Anyway, you, you understand, you clear and safe, place it in the box. Now you transport back to the team. You take it to the armory. You open the box. You start getting weapons out of there. When you get a weapon out of there, you pick it up. What do you do? You clear and safe the weapon, okay? Make sure there's no magazine, just same, same stuff. Now you know that, you, that they're probably clear and safe because all of that stuff had to occur, is supposed to have occurred to get them in that box. They're supposed to be clear and safe, all right? But you can't assume. So you pick it up and automatically, as a habit, you clear and safe it. Now, if you're going to clear and safe it and just hand it off to someone, then you do so. If you're going to take it somewhere, do something with it, and then someone asks for it, you're going to hand it to them. Then before you hand it to them, you clear and safe it, and you hand it to them. They receive it. They clear and safe it. Okay? It's just automatic. That's how you receive a weapon. And it's visually and physically. So for that accident to occur, all of those things had to be uh, bypassed, okay? End of a long range day, guys are tired. Maybe the guy still had one in the chamber, took the magazine out, one in the chamber, wasn't thinking, didn't clear and safe his weapon, took it over to the armor. Armor's in a hurry, he's getting lots of guns, he's grabbing it, putting it right in the box. Didn't clear and safe it, okay? Now you got a loaded weapon in a box of unloaded clear and safe weapons heading back to the team. Transports back to the team, takes it into the armory, okay? Everyone's in a hurry, you got a lot to do, you've got a briefing that you got to go to, got to get some things done. Green Bray asks for another weapon to clean, Navy SEAL grabs it, yeah, here you go, grabs it, hands it to him. Green Bray takes it, and now he starts getting ready to break it down to, uh, to clean. And boom, accident happens, okay? Someone almost dies, okay? This stuff's no joke, guys. Okay, another story. <clears throat> Young Navy SEAL, brand new Navy SEAL. Um, just assigned to a team out on the West Coast. Uh, I know his family. They're actually from here in Ohio. Amazing family, wonderful family. And I never got to meet him, but um, from what I know, he was a, a hell of a, a likable guy. And obviously a stud because he made it through buds. But he was, there's different stories about it, but what I gather from uh, family and from friends is that he was newly assigned to a team and he went out to a bar um, there in California and he met up with a girl, whether it was his girlfriend or a girl that... Um, the, the, he decided to go back with him to his apartment. I don't know, but girl went back to with him to his apartment. Now, he'd been drinking, okay? So that's a problem in itself. Weapons and alcohol do not mix. They absolutely do not mix, okay? So if you're drinking, you're not shooting, okay? People say, let's get a six-pack of beer and go shooting. Uh-uh, don't do it, okay? Light the beer lamp after the weapons are put away. In any case, he goes back to his uh, apartment and he wants to show, he decides he wants to show this girl his weapons uh, collection. And there's a pistol and he grabs a pistol and she doesn't want anything to do with it. And he says, don't worry, it's safe. It's clear and safe. There's, you know, it's, it's not dangerous. And he put it to his head and he pulled the trigger and he ended up dying. He didn't die right away, but he ended up dying. So there was a round in the chamber. And the, the story is that his roommate uh, borrowed his weapon, potentially, and left a round in the chamber. Now, whether that's true or if he left a round in the chamber, someone left a round in the chamber by accident. 
They were shooting, it was locked and loaded. They took the magazine out and they're still around in the chamber. They didn't rack the round out of the chamber, okay? So they're still around in the chamber. They put the weapon away. He comes in and not thinking clearly as it is in an intoxicated state and not yet having ingrained in him the habit of picking up a weapon and clearing and saving it before he does anything. He picks up a weapon. It has a round, a fateful round in the chamber. He puts it to his head, which is another foolish thing to do. That you just don't do. And he pulled the trigger and he's no longer with us. And his family is an amazing family, and they're absolutely torn apart. Um, absolutely torn apart. Just a hor horrible tragedy. Okay. So I tell that story because it's an embarrassing thing for me, uh, some of these stories with the SEAL teams and Green Berets. But I want you to understand that these folks are the best of the best. They know how to handle weapons. But even the best of the best can, can cause fatal errors, or they can... Uh, they can they can do something that that kills someone that was accidental <clears throat> okay so the best can make mistakes and those mistakes can be fatal so you have to understand that what we always say is complacency kills complacency complacency kills you can't be complacent and it is a constant struggle to maintain vigilance and not get complacent when you're doing dangerous things, when you're working around dangerous personnel, dangerous equipment, or doing dangerous jobs, all right? There have been people who have jumped out of airplanes without, an, without a parachute even on because they were, went up and they weren't going to jump this time. They were just helping send people out of the plane, but they normally always fall in the back and jump out and just out of habit, Jumped right out, no parachute even on. So just any time that you're, you're working with dangerous equipment, weapons, you have to make sure that you're focused and you maintain vigilance, all right? And do not get complacent and follow the rules of, of weapon safety, which we are going to go over. Uh, another story, a new one uh, to me, but there's so many. There are so many stories. Um, <clears throat> a... Uh, guy uh, was clearing and safe and getting his ready his weapon ready to I don't know the story exactly but I'm gonna tell you what, what happened here and you understand uh, how this could go wrong uh, he was either getting it ready to clean or whatever but it was loaded took the magazine out telephone rings okay places the weapon down goes and answers the phone comes back picks up the weapon continues to do what he was doing and there's a round in the chamber Boom, shoots the round and it goes through the house, uh, through the wall and potentially into the neighbor's side in an apartment building. Uh, I understand no one was injured, no one was hurt, but you can see there that that would be uh, uh, something that, that happens if you're not in the habit of when you pick up a weapon, visually and physically inspecting the chamber and the magazine well to make sure the weapon is clear and safe. If you have to remember whether it's clear and safe, that's not good enough. Things happen. Right in the midst of what, when we're doing something, things happen. Oops, what are you yelling at me for? Your wife gets upset. and What are you yelling at me for? Okay, I'll take out the trash. Take out the trash. You come back. Now, where was I? Okay. You don't have to wonder where you were. You need to do what you always do when you go back to a weapon, when you pick up a weapon, visually and physically inspect it. Make sure the weapon is clear and safe. Now we're going to talk about the five laws of weapon safety. The five laws of weapon safety. Some places will tell you that there are four laws of weapon safety. Some places will tell you that there are six laws of weapon safety. Okay? But I'm going to tell you of five laws of weapons safety. Now, whether it's four or five or six... They're, they're the same laws, just broken down in different ways, okay? They cover the same things. But in the SEAL teams, we go by five laws of weapon safety, and I'm going to tell you what they are. Treat every weapon as if it's loaded, okay? Never 
Point the muzzle of your weapon at anything you're not prepared to shoot. Keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Be aware of your target and what's beyond, and know the condition of your weapon at all times. Okay? I remember these by the first word of every law. Okay, so in ATG, we train to remember, treat, never, keep, be, no. Treat, never, keep, be, no. Treat, never, keep, be, no. Okay, sometimes these laws are difficult to remember. Now, you don't necessarily need to recite them, but for weapons handling, if there's anything you're going to recite or, or that you should be able to recite, it should it'll be these laws. But you must, you must understand them and you must put them into practice whenever you're handling weapons, all right? So it's a good idea to be able to recite them. You have to understand them. And one way that you can remember them is by memorizing, treat, never keep, be, no. Now, some of you might have heard that, uh, but uh, many of you might not have. And the reason might be is because I invented it. I came up with it. I just started doing it because I, when I started teaching courses, I was, um, you know, what was the next one? What was the next one? I don't like that when I'm in front of people. So, and happens a lot, you know, to, to all of us. But treat, never keep be no. Treat every weapon as if it's loaded. Okay? Never point the muzzle of your weapon at anything you're not prepared to shoot. So let's, let's start again because I'm going to break each one down. Okay? Well, first I'll finish them, then I'll come back. Um, keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you're ready to fire, be aware of your target and what's beyond, and know the condition of your weapon at all times. All right, let's start off with number one. Treat every weapon as if it's loaded. Now you have to understand how a loaded weapon should be treated to be able to treat it correctly, all right? But you need to know that that weapon is a, uh, it's a tool but it can inflict deadly force. You can inflict deadly force with it, I should say. All right? So to treat that weapon as if it's loaded, to treat every weapon as if it's loaded, that covers all the other rules as long as you understand how a loaded weapon should be treated. All right? And that's we're not going to point it at people um, unless they're bad people, unless we need to point it at someone. Now, in training, in a controlled environment, in the SEAL teams and at ATG as well, sometimes we do point weapons at each other, but those weapons are cleared and saved. There's no ammo anywhere. They're cleared and saved. Instructor checked. Instructor checked again. Buddy checked. And we make sure that we are not live firing at all. And the reason we do that is because we are training, and I don't... Um, condone or advocate that you do this at all because we're in a very controlled environment of instructors that have decades upon decades of experience and we have a lot of safety parameters and range safety officers in place, all right? Uh, we don't have plat uh, rubber guns or blue guns or uh, fake guns enough for everyone to go around and we like to train with our real weapons. So yes, in the SEAL teams, we do point weapons in a controlled environment at each other in training, all right? Moving in and out on a, on, a, on a threat, okay? Multiple threats, the threats moving in on us. And the reason we do that is because we train, we train to deal with um, people normally. Normally our threat is a person, all right? So we're training with people. But again, we haven't shot live, we've cleared and saved, all ammo is away from the area, the training area, it's a very controlled environment. And then once we start going live, we say, okay, we're gonna go live, bring the ammo in, never again are weapons pointed at one another, okay? Law of weapon safety number two, never point your muzzle at anything you're not prepared to shoot. Now it's not anything that you're not going to shoot, because I've pointed my weapon at many people that I was prepared to shoot, but luckily didn't have to shoot, 
Okay, and so I'm not I'm not shooting everything I point my weapon at. It's not like a, a katana when it leaves the scabbard, blood must flow. All right, it is it is simply uh, I am prepared to shoot, and if I have to, I will. But I'm not pointing my weapon at things that I'm not prepared to shoot. Okay, or preparing to shoot. Okay, treat every weapon as if it's loaded. Never point the muzzle of, wep of your weapon at anything you're not prepared to shoot. Keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you're ready to fire. All right? So I'm going to be, if, I, if my eyes aren't on my sights, I'm not ready to fire. Now, I could be. I could be coming from the holster. I could be firing from here, from here, from here, all the way up. Ideal position to shoot is extended arm with my eyes on the sights and my sights on the target. Right? But... Uh, keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you're ready to fire. So if I'm not firing, okay, or I'm not preparing to fire, I'm not ready to fire, my finger's not on the trigger. If I'm running somewhere, my finger's not on the trigger. You see all these cop shows and stuff, someone's running after the bad guy and their finger's on the trigger, okay? Well, they're poorly trained, uh, for one, but really they're an actor and nobody advised them technically on, on on stuff like that. So that's hard to watch movies sometimes for uh, folks that know what's going on with that stuff or should or what should be happening because a lot of people don't follow rules of weapon safety. What happens when your finger's on the trigger and it's not supposed to be and you grab a hold of something, okay? You grab a hold of a, a person by the shirt or a curtain to move it aside, what happens when you clench this fist? A lot of times you have what's called a sympathetic reflex. Okay, you clench this and this one clenches too. And you can squeeze off around inadvertently, okay? Accidentally or negligently. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that you can think about is tripping and falling, tripping over something and, and accidentally shooting something. So your finger is off the trigger, all right? Now, uh, Treat, never keep, and then be. Be aware of your target and what's beyond. If I am shooting a bad guy that has come up my, the steps in my room and I'm shooting, I need to shoot this guy, and right on the other side of the, the doorway, okay, or the wall behind that bad guy is my son's room, then I might want to, before I shoot, take a step to the right so the angle is slightly different. At least I'm aware of what is beyond my target. I might have to take the shot. Maybe he's shooting at me or preparing to shoot at me. I might have to take the shot. I'm a precision shooter. I'm going to hit what I'm shooting at. Okay, But if something happens and I don't, I want to be aware of my target and what's beyond. Right? If we're out at the range, we shoot cardboard targets a lot of times. And bullets punch right through those. What is behind the target? Okay, and bullets travel a long, long distance. So, um, so you need to uh, be aware of that as well. Okay, we'll talk about that more too. Uh, treat never keep B and know. Know the condition of your weapon at all times. Don't assume the condition of your weapon. Know the condition of your weapon. If if we're police officers and you're coming to the armory to get your weapon, your, your duty weapon that we have for some reason, or we need to go get, uh, we need to grab the bigger weapons, the M4s, and we're going to LA bank robbery. And uh, I hand you a weapon. I say, here you go, Jack. It's, lo it's locked and loaded. You're ready to go. Should you just take that weapon and go? No. Okay, you might trust me completely and you assume that I'm correct, but you don't know that that weapon is locked and loaded. Okay, so you need to just same thing, clear and safe it and then make sure it is locked and loaded or at least make sure, check the magazine, make sure the magazine is loaded and then do a press check to make sure that it's loaded. The weapon, the weapon is loaded. I'm uh, uh, looking at a forward assist there is why I'm doing that with my hands on a uh, M4 rifle type thing, which I'll show you here in a minute too, okay? So you need to know the condition of your weapon at all times. If you step up to a firing line and you pull your weapon out and you go to shoot the target and it goes click instead of bang, that's called a dead man's gun. And that means that more than likely, if you thought the weapon was loaded, you have a magazine with 
rounds in the in the weapon, but you never racked the weapon, or at least you didn't rack it enough or properly to uh, put a round in the chamber. So you have a dead man's gun. And on the range, that's going to cost you a case of beer. Not on the range, but after the range. Cost you a case of beer. Okay, at ATG, we get a lot of beer at our clubhouse because of people with dead man's guns. Okay, they go click. You shouldn't have gone click. Oh, it's real funny out at the range. Okay, kind of embarrassing. But that could cost your life. You know, those, those split seconds when someone's trying to kill you and you have to use lethal force... That could cost your life. So you need to know the condition of your weapon at all times. So once again, five laws of weapon safety. Treat, never, keep, be, no. Treat every weapon as if it's loaded. Never point the muzzle of your weapon at any anything you're not prepared to shoot. Keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Be aware of your target and what's beyond and know the condition of your weapon at all times. Got it? Okay. Make sure you got it. Those are very important. Know those. Know those inside and out. Know how to clear and safe a weapon. Know the five laws of weapon safety. Adhere to them. Do not, uh, do not disregard them. Okay. Now, I said laws are, are overlapping for safety. So, for example, let's say that I have my finger on the trigger when I should not have my finger on the trigger. Well, if I trip and fall... If I'm maintaining muzzle discipline and I shoot a round off by accident, or even if I don't trip and fall, my finger's on trigger, it's not supposed to be, hopefully my weapon is not pointed at anything I'm not prepared to shoot, or it's pointed at everything that I'm not prepared to shoot, but it's, right? Yes. Um, <clears throat> no, it's not pointed at anything I'm not prepared to shoot, okay? It's pointed in a safe direction. That's what I'm trying to say. It's pointed in a safe direction, okay? So... Boom, round goes off into the ground. That is a, an accidental slash negligent discharge, okay? No, no two ways about it, okay? You were, you were negligent with your weapon. You did something you weren't supposed to do. You didn't know the condition of your weapon. You had your finger on the trigger when you shouldn't have had your finger on the trigger. Boom, weapon goes off. That's a negligent discharge, okay? You understand? Hopefully, because the laws overlap and you didn't point it at something that you that you shouldn't have, then nobody gets hurt. Okay, but sometimes, just like those stories that I told you, things occur and all the stars line up in the wrong way, and bad things can happen. So we want to adhere to all of these uh, laws of weapon safety at all times. Mm -hmm.